The late 60s and early 70s were a great time for cars when design and power were not stifled by extreme EPA and DOT regulations. In 1969, Fiat bought a 50% stake in Ferrari, forever changing the brand's styling, so cars such as the Dino and Daytona were the last of the pure Enzo era cars. The 365 GTB4 Daytona was first unveiled to the public in 1968 at the Paris Auto Show. The Daytona is powered by a two-valve, 4.4-liter Colombo V12. The 365 stands for 365 cc per cylinder, GT, Grand Touring, and B for Berlinetta, and 4 for 4 cam. This behind me is a 365 GTS4 or Daytona Spider. There were 1,284 of the coupes made, but only 122 factory Daytona Spiders, making them extremely rare and desirable collector cars. This Daytona Spider in particular has a really interesting history. So it is one of the factory original Daytona Spiders, so one out of 122. And it was sold new in 1973 to John von Neumann, who was the Western Porsche and Volkswagen dealer. Then in 1977, it was sold to its current owner. He decided that he wanted it red over tan instead of yellow over black. So in 1985, he had the car disassembled and the body painted red, but he didn't want to continue with the project. He had other projects to deal with. So the car ended up being pushed into a storage unit where it sat for 35 years untouched until about two weeks ago when me and my dad and my fiance went and took it out of the storage unit, put all the stuff in cars and trucks and brought it over here where it's seen public and seen daylight for the first time in 35 years. When this car was sold to its current owner, it only had 1,400 and somewhat on miles on it. And in the couple years that he owned it before taking it apart, he only put a couple hundred miles on the car. So it currently today has 1,835 miles, making it arguably the lowest mileage Daytona Spider in the world to date. One of the questions you get a lot with these kind of cars is, is it a matching numbers car? And back in the day, that meant that the chassis number of the car matched the engine number, knowing that the original engine that it came out of the factory with is still the one that's in the car. So for instance, back in the day with say a Lusso, they would make the chassis and engine specifically for each other. And if the chassis is number one, two, three, four, they'd stamp the engine number one, two, three, four. But as cars became more mass produced, they no longer did it that way. So with cars like the Dinos and Daytonas, they started a different kind of numbering system where they would make a whole bunch of chassis and a whole bunch of engines and then pick two and put them together and record which two went together. So you may have Daytona's chassis number one, two, three, four with engine number five, six, seven, eight, and the factory would record that down so you can know that yes, that engine is the correct one that the car came out of the factory with. Also, another thing that they did is they made body numbers. So this particular Daytona has body number 1313. And what that means is all the little extras, the striker plates and the door trim and the little headlight shrouds all have numbers stamped into them. So right here is 1313. On these 1313, all these little bits have that number stamped in it. And it just means that pieces like this, which a lot of times nowadays, you take a car apart, these get bent, warped a little, and you toss them out and buy new ones or make new ones because fixing them is almost impossible. Um, but having the number stamped in them means they are factory original to this car. They have not been replicated, reproduced, bought new ones, and it just makes the car more original, more historic, and more valuable, really. A lot of people love restoration projects like this. Something about having a car in a million pieces and watching it all come together is just, it's an amazing process. Plus, at that point, you can choose what colors you want and kind of personalize it a little bit. Uh, a lot of people choose to go back to the factory original colors, but at this point when it's taken apart, if you decide you want it blue or something else, then, you know, it's not a big deal. Uh, now, a lot of people prefer not to deal with the restoration and they want to have a completely finished car fully restored already. The problem with that is sometimes you never know what's hiding underneath that shiny brand new paint. So a lot of times cars like that could have 
a lot of Bondo work or a tweaked body from an accident years ago that was repaired when these, car were, these cars weren't as valuable. And so it was kind of a quick and easy, cheap repair. Um, so the nice thing about this particular car is you can see all the inner panels. You can see that there's no Bondo, there's no dents, there's no little hammer marks from when a dent was pounded out back in the day. It's all there and exposed so you know what you see is what you get and it's a really original accident-free car. When we were bringing this car out of the storage unit and laying all the pieces out, which took days and it was kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we kept coming across little things to tell us that the story we've been told about this car is correct. So things like the sticker on the window and the license plate have the 1985 um, registration sticker and 1985 sticker here. So you know that's the last time it saw the light of day and all the parts for the car were wrapped in newspaper dated from 1985. So everything we've found about this car so far co corroborates the story we've been told. This Ferrari was not originally called the Daytona. It was just the 365 GTB or GTS4. Now the media De deemed it the Daytona because in 1967, Ferrari won a 123 with their 330 P4, P3, and 412P at the 24 hours of Daytona. So this car unveiled in 1968 was deemed the Daytona kind of to commemorize their victory. Uh, the thing about these cars, the coupes, there were so many of them made and there were so few of the spiders that a lot of people wanted the spider. So some guys like Strayman and like my dad when he ran European Auto Restoration made a name for themselves by making these cars into spiders. So they'd take a coupe and they'd cut the top off and they'd do all the correct conversions and make really nice Daytona spider replicas or conversions. Um, now, the funny thing is, some people value the spider conversions pretty high, uh, but they're just conversions. You know, this may be, as it sits, a $1.6 million car and complete cars cross the 2 million mark easily. But that's because there was only 124 or 22 made from the factory. Whereas the conversions, they're really cool cars, but they're about on par with what a coupe is worth. Uh, depending on the level of ref restoration and work done on them, but they're not that much more valuable. What I find really funny is uh, back in the day, like I said before, the work, these cars weren't as valuable, so the work done on them was, uh, you know, it, they didn't take as much consideration into some little things. So when my dad would cut off the tops of these cars, he would take the tops and just toss them away because nobody cared at that time. But nowadays, if you can find one of those cut tops from one of the old Daytonas, they're worth thousands and thousands of dollars because there's some people who want to convert their cars back to original spec. So uh, stories like that, like my dad had a spider he was trying to convert back into a coupe and he actually had to go buy a top even though back in the day he had them lying around like just littering his, <laughs> his workspace. So uh, it's just interesting what people have done with the cars throughout the years and the stories that go along with them. We don't have a lot of opportunities to show you guys cars taken apart like this where you can see the bones of them. Most cars that we get are fully put together, ready to go. You just turn the key and drive away. Uh, so I was really excited to give you a chance to see the the makings and the interiors and you know the bones of one of these classic cars. It's really cool uh, to see, you know, what what's under the seats, what's under the dash, what's under everything. And having a cool story to go along with it is something that I was really excited to share. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, please subscribe because we got a lot more coming real soon. Up next, we're gonna be doing a video on the Countach we have, which I've been wanting to do for months now. So like, subscribe and stay tuned because we got a lot more coming real soon.